feel like we need to teach our uh, young generation, and their generation, yeah, teach our young people who they are, who their ancestors are. Because when we all see them are gone, they need to know them. It's just like I missed out asking my grandmother a whole lot of questions. Who was my great who my great great parents were? I know the great parents. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press record. Okay, today is October the 8th, 2022. I am in Monticello, Florida at Casa Bianca Missionary Baptist Church. My name is Sebastiano Coco. I'm with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. And today I am with... Angelica McGee. Okay, just Hopkins Townsend. Patricia Harvey. Wilbur Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And Lisa Armstrong. Okay, so I'm gonna start us off with um, a pretty basic question, which is um, in whatever terms you wanna answer it, but basically what brought you here today? What does this day mean to you? Uh, anything of significance? And if you will lean slightly Towards, uh, towards her, because she mm -hmm. has the mic, and you can just answer, we'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. It'll pick it up even if mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. Okay, yes, what brought me here today yes, sir. is because I'm a member of the church here, and I found out that we were gonna be out here finding out about our history. But then letting us know about who's okay, in the who and who's what. And, uh, I, and I was interested in it because I knew a lot of people in this county and a lot of them belonged to the church here that they were looking for. And that's why I came out today to make sure that I find out who I am I related to and who else in the family because I don't want my child to go out and marry somebody related to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm glad you're trying to take on the history. I came out for the same reason he came out. I want to know my family history. And really, I want to know for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren to let them know. Okay. Um, I came out to find out the, my family history, and I'm very interested in knowing who my grandparents and my great-grandparents, because all died before I was born. So I really would like to um, know who they are, and yeah, know who they are so I can pass it on to my other children. Caspianco is, matter of fact, this church it's kind of like the ground seed of all the other little churches around in this area. So that's what I really want to know too, is uh, who started the church? Uh huh. And who started, started yeah, where all the um, family members started from. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other churches in the area that you would like to speak on by any chance? You said this is sort of the kick-started for so much of it. My family owned a church too, maybe about, maybe about five miles from here. Yeah, what and it, but that? it, Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. So, this is pretty much, yeah, what I want to find out, how the basic about how everything got started. Mm -hmm. What about you, sir? What okay, brought I, you here today? Yeah, uh, I came with my sister. My sister uh, uh, had me to come with her. And we came to find out more about uh, our ancestors. And we are from Leon County. And I understand that we are connected with uh, Jefferson County also. Mm -hmm. And my parents, my grandparents, all has a connection with the Wilani Plantation. And there was another one, I can't call the name of her right now. But she has all that information, she's a historian. Uh, but I wanna, I'm interested in finding out who we are as a people and where we came from. 
so I can regain my true identity. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to ask? What do you want the next generation to know about um, to know about Casa Bianca? I want next generation to know, as Howard Shai said, the truth. He said the truth will make us free. And I want them to know more about truth. Since so much has been told to us were lies, I want our people to know the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and what about you? What do you want the next generation to know about Casa Bianca? Actually, I want them to know that Casablanca is really an original church organization that our church was built upon. And that's what all I want. Mm -hmm. What about you? Well, I want the next generation to know that Casablanca Church is one of the oldest churches that's mm -hmm. in Montana. Mm -hmm. It's 150 years old. Mm -hmm. And some of my grandparents were the ones that helped to rebuild this church from the 1800s all the way up to this point mm -hmm. in time, which is that I'm a member of this church. And uh, I've been here for seven and some years. And it's been a good church. Been through a lot of pastors that different ones have come and gone during that time that I've been here. And I've learned a lot by coming here to the church. And I want them to know about the next, the next generation to know that I kept for a history about all the members that used to be here so that they'll know who was who and uh, whether some of their relatives are still here and they can't the church. Um. What part of your identity do you believe is missing? What part of your identity do you believe is missing that you're trying to regain today? Oh, duh. What I, what I was trying to regain today? Yeah, what part here. of your identity is missing? Uh, okay. I wanted to see if I had any relatives that was coming here today. Uh, and I also knew that I had some friends that was coming, and I wanted them to find out about their relatives also. That's why I went around in the community making contact with different ones so that we could have that reunion, like coming together here today, and that they, they also would know about their family. Because I found out today that Trish, her family, mm -hmm. and she didn't even know about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's good to have yeah. one of them. And then what about you? What part of your identity um, do you think is missing? Just bringing the family together, yeah. knowing the history and bringing them all together. So our future generation will know where they came from and who, you know, who was the ground or the seed of the a whole family plan, right, in back in the days and up until now. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to know, uh, uh, as I said, uh, who am I as a human mm -hmm. on the earth and know more about the Torah, which has our true identity as a people, Deuteronomy 28, mm -hmm. uh, and according to that, that we are the true descendants of the Hebrew Israelite slaves mm -hmm. that was in the land of Israel mm -hmm. and in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We are those those people, and I want to get to know more about it. What are some of your fondest memories of this area? Uh, fondest memories. memories. This area, uh, I would say, <laughs> the people in this community, community, in this area, are friendly. They're mm -hmm. nice people, mm -hmm. and I love them. 
Mm -hmm. And we don't have that much uh, going on of robbery mm -hmm. and stealing and all around in this community right out here. We don't have that. And we are able to help one another mm -hmm. because if, like when Trisha was coming along, and I would go out, and my wife and I, her grandparents, mm -hmm. we would take them food on Saturdays and Sundays so they wouldn't have to worry about it. They was elderly people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was something that we've done in this community, and I love doing it. Matter of fact, friends. I love doing it. Yeah, family too. Uh, family and friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about that too. Family and friends. <laughs> Good friends. That's what we are. Yeah. And then, Patricia, um, what is uh, what are some of your fondest memories? Well, I, I, my fondest memory is about this community. I moved away when I was 17. I moved oh. to Tallahassee, which is not that far away. But I remember everybody took care of each other. You know, I mean, especially the, the younger ones took care of the older ones. And, and let me tell you, church, when it comes down to getting together and church meeting, these houses used to be full. Oh, man, we had good times. I miss those days. Ooh. Yes, we had good times when we came to church, when we came together. And I, yeah, I miss that. It's not like that anymore. It's not like that too much anymore. People don't even want to come to church anymore. Yeah. And that's my fondest memory is when everybody got together. The whole all neighborhood, oh, the whole neighborhood just got together. What kind of food and traditions? Oh, do my God. Food. <laughs> food. Any kind of food you can think of. Oh, collard greens, cornbread, macaroni and cheese, banana put from scratch. All of it was from scratch. Them older people know how to cook. Oh, yes. So, um, yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah. What about you? Mm -hmm. Fondest memories? Uh, I guess coming up as uh, a child, uh, <laughs> we was, my dad was a farmer. And what did he farm? Cotton, corn, name it, he farmed. <laughs> uh, and mom was one of the greatest cooks, like she was saying. I was mm -hmm. thinking that we, we had the same mom. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> but my mom used to, my aunt told me she used to take nothing and make something That's out true. of it. That's true. Because it was nine siblings. Wow. Nine siblings? Nine siblings in the family. How many boys, how many girls? Four boys and five girls. Wow. She used to take nothing and make, make something, something out of it to feed us. How many bedrooms are in the house? Three. One for the one for the boys, one for the girls, one for the uh, parents. We had two bedrooms. And we never went home. Mm -hmm. A day in our life. Because we always had something to eat. We always had something. <laughs> what about gardens? Your mom was a gardener. She had her own person of God, raised chickens, different things like that. I miss my mom. I loved her because of who she was. I was a mama. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> you could tell. But I didn't know it until after I got grown. I was a mama's baby. And uh, I remember once the mule and wagon ran away with me. You what? The mule and the wagon, we had mule yes. and wagon back in the ran away yes. <laughs> ran away with me and my brothers. And he jumped out. I stayed in. I had seen a little TV about Superman. And I was hollering for Superman to come rescue me. But only thing happened, the mule went between two pine trees. And the wagon and the wheels came out from under, and I just got a knot on my forehead. Uh, wind knot. Mom called it a wind knot. She came running up there, grabbed me, uh, my baby, <laughs> and uh, found out it was just a wind knot. But I could have gotten killed, but by the grace of the Most High. Um, what were your parents' names? Fred and Marie Robinson Jefferson. And then could you give us um, your parents' names and what they did for a living? Uh, my parents, my parents' name were Herbert Thompson. My mom named Phoebe Thompson. Can you spell that? Her name? P H F E B I U. And uh, my 
grandparents, me Bailey and Panky Bailey, mm -hmm. and they belonged to this church in my uncle's and sweetest people you want to know. Oh, the lifetime that I've been here, my family been a member of Cassiano Commissionary Baptist Church, and like I said, that it was it's good. We had some good ministers to come through, mm -hmm. and everybody was friendly enough. Mm -hmm. And like on, we had the cookouts and stuff here at the church. Mm -hmm. There were people coming along the highway, white and black. Mm -hmm. They pull up out there, mm -hmm. and they'll give plates of food. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just a loving thing mm -hmm. around. What did your family do for a living? Huh? What did your family do for a living? What did your family do for work? What did they do? It yeah. was farm. Farmers. They had a farm. They had a farm out here. Matter of fact, I live out there on it now. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I've been out there for 70 something years. And they were the ones that helped to build this church. They helped to build this church? Yeah. My granddad, my uncle, and all of us. When they came to church, they, they didn't have that much money, but everybody put in a donation. And that donation went toward building the church. And that's why the church has been built about three different times. Addition and everything else has been put on to. And it's the last time it was done through Pastor Barry and the, the pastor's here now. And it's just the way we do things here at the church. And then can you tell us your parents or grandparents, um, their names and what they did for a living? My, my great-great-grandparents was Lydia, I mean, Willie and Lydia Bellamy. And my grandmother was Willie and Carrie Peterson. And my mom, yeah, yeah, my mom was a Peterson too. Her name was Lydia Peterson. But um, as he was saying about the church thing, my family owned the church. My grandfather built the church. This church? No, no, no. The, oh, my, we have church. our own family church too. My my uh, grandfather built that church, Monish La Missionary Baptist Church, and uh, we own the church and we farm too. That's why they made their living to farm. So the church was really important. Too. Church and farming was the most important thing in our family. What kind of things did they farm? We, everything, collard green, peas, okra, we, we had it. Anything would grow in the ground and with fruits and vegetables, we had it. Yes. <laughs> we always ate something, because it was always something to eat. Chicken! <laughs> we had our own chickens. <laughs> um, so... What were some of the advantages or disadvantages of being a part of this community? I moved away when I was 17. Where'd you go? I mean, what did you go for? Tallahassee. Just to get out or for a job? Just, or? Uh, yeah, I got tired of farming. As young people do, they get tired of, yeah. Trying to, trying to sell you over. Yeah, yeah. Coming to do it out there. <laughs> Spreading your feet. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I could spread my wings at the end. So I, yeah, I moved to Tallahassee, got a job, and uh, came down every now and then and took, and took care of my grandma. Yeah, because she raised me. My grandmother, Carrie Peterson, she raised me. And uh, and I got a host of cousins, Bellamy's. We all lived in a little community. My uncle lived in one house in the community. My grandmother lived in one of the houses. And uh, my auntie, it was just three houses in that little community right there. And they took care of each other. We, yeah. We was kids. We ran from one house to the other one. Mm -hmm. um, sir, what about you? Did you ever leave? Did you ever leave Monticello? No, I'm, I'm, I'm from Tallahassee. Oh, you're from Tallahassee? Yeah, I'm from Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. Okay. I lived in Tallahassee all my life until uh, about, well, I, was, I lived, moved to Central Florida for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. And then I just recently came back from uh, from Central Florida, uh, to back to Tallahassee. And I really enjoyed uh, Tallahassee. <laughs> 
But uh, it, it, it has been good to me. My upbringing. I want to say this. I, I, when I was a child, and I, I, I know we can forget, what scared me the most was Emmett Till. <laughs> the killing of Emmett Till. He was 14 at that time, and I was seven. And that really took a toll on my life. And I just wanted to say that. But, Let you know. me ask you this. With that thought, how did the uh, murder of George Floyd make you feel? Did it oh, take you back to the Emmett Till? Yeah. Floyd? It took me back, back to the Emmett Till. Now that I am where I am and knowing who I am, it helped me to understand what the Most High is doing in our lives with the killing of the black people. He's trying to wake us up to regain our true identity. We are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We lost our way. They said, come let us cut them off that the name of Israel will be in remembrance no more. That's why we don't know who we are. That's why we don't know where we came from. Mm -hmm. But the Most High has opened my eyes to see this and to try to get, wake up his people. Mm -hmm. Wake up Jacob. Mm -hmm. And then um, we did really good. Uh, oh, yes. What did you, what did you just ask? Um, the last question was, um, have you ever left Monticello? Have I ever left yes. Monticello? To live. To live. No. To live? No, you haven't. I would leave Mama Sella at all. Mm -hmm. To go anywhere else to live. <laughs> I love it. No beach, no choir, no robbers, no killing, no nothing. I can leave keys in my vehicle all night long. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about nobody going out there and stealing shit. Nothing. The house on lock. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, did you have any children? Yes. Uh, how many and what are their names? I got uh, two boys and two girls. What are their names? Uh, one name is uh, Orithia Jermaine Thompson. The other one is named Hopkins Tyke Thompson. And the other one name is Brian Key. And the other one name is Nicardo Thompson. And what do they do for a living? What do they do for a living? Work with one work with FedEx, one in the bail bonding business. The other, he got the air condition repair service, and the other one drive a semi truck. And what about you? Any children? Yeah, I have four children. My oldest one lives in Gainesville. Oh wow! He got a, a lawyer's office in Gainesville, and then. What's his name? Flazelle Fields. And my daughter, she lives in Tallahassee. She works as a, a senior health care in the cafeteria of one of the nursing homes in Tallahassee. And um, my middle son, he's head of Constolius over on Family Campus. And um, my younger son, he's a rapper. He says he's a rapper, so yeah. <laughs> But I got 14 grandkids and 10 great grandkids. 14 grandkids, wow. And 10 great grandkids. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I have uh, five children. Uh, Could you bring the mic close to you? Three, <laughs> thank you. Three, three uh, girls and uh, two boys. Uh, two in uh, Central Florida. Two in Jacksonville and one in West Virginia. And my baby, I love her. <laughs> I love them all, but my baby, I love her. Well, she's, she's a girl. girl. She's yeah. a girl. Yeah, she's my, a girl. Yeah, that's my baby. Um, so, you know, we've talked a bit about community, your families, if you've moved or not, etc. Um, so, one thing that just bringing it to today, you know, all this heritage, all of this history, all the stories. Uh, how do you feel like this church, if you want to be specific, or like any church, uh, what are you thinking, like, in 2022, uh, what do you think can be their role 
in sort of keeping these memories alive or how would you like to see you know your your kids and grandkids interact with this history and bring it forward uh, specifically in the context of the church okay what we got to do after today we got to go and talk to our children and tell them about today and what happened today here at this church and from it, they, we could tell them that, that we learned something about different ones, our cousins and friends and all that, but that was at the church. And they keep it going, then we won't have any problem worrying about our children going off and being married to the, some of their cousins or something like that. That's what I think about all the time because I know I got some boys and they go out, I try my best to let them know who their cousins and things are like that. So they won't uh, fall in love with one of their cousins. What about you? Okay. Um, I feel like we need to teach our um, young generation, and the generation, yeah, teach our young people who they are who their ancestors are. Because when we all seniors are gone, they need to know this. It's just like I missed out asking my grandmother a whole lot of questions about who my great, who my great, great parents was. I know the great parents name was, but I don't know the great, great, great parents and I'm quite sure she knew. But this is what we need to start off teaching. And it starts at the house of God doing this too. Sunday school, Bible study, we can teach our kids when we're teaching them about the Word of God, we need to just add all of this into it, you know? And I, that's the way I feel about it right now. It, our young generation is more important right now to know the history, most of all. What about you? <laughs> I deal with truth. Now that I've came into truth, I deal with truth. We as a people. I'm going to tell you how I said, you should know the truth. The truth should make you. Ella Thompson said, a lot of things were forced upon us. Number one, Christianity was forced upon us. Jesus never was a Christian. Never was. Nowhere in the Bible you say you see where he was a Christian. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, he told us who he was. We never were, should have been in a church. I hate to hear, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I hate to hear, for y'all to hear this. We never, Jesus never went into a church. Christianity came from Constantine, not, not Jesus. Remember he said, I am the way the truth in life, and you should know the truth. That's why he told us, we are, we are his choice people. Our people don't know this. It's sad. We are his choice people. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six and seven. You are a chosen people above everybody on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. <laughs> but our people don't know this, and this is, Test that he has given me to wake up our, to try to wake up our people. Okay, so uh, actually, I didn't even know this myself before, right before coming here. But Jefferson and Madison counties, you know, at first I, I, I would think you know it's the South, it's another Jefferson, but it's the Jefferson, right? And so. Um, and then specifically, I mean, Casa Bianca literally means white house in Italian. So, um, how does, how does it make you feel knowing that this church and this area, this community has such a direct link to one of the most known presidents, one of the most known figures, you know, like what is, what, how does that connection, what does that mean to you? that D. Thomas Jefferson is related to this. Not, not to give him any more importance, but just, just for you, like in terms of history, how do you see it? It means a lot to me because uh, Jefferson County, 
we can have a lot of different buildings and stuff here in Jefferson County that different uh, people have stayed in in Jefferson County. And this is part of the history because uh, Lee stayed here. Mm -hmm. General Lee stayed here in Monticello. And we got places here in Monticello today that if, uh, all kind of people just come to see because of the age of it and the, all the history of it. And that's why it's so much going on in Jefferson County. To be as small as it is, it was a lot going on here in Jefferson County. During the World Wars, we still got the buildings up. People still go in and just pay money to go through and look at them because of the history here in Jefferson County. How about you, ma'am? How do you think about that history, you know? I'm proud to be in the little city of somebody important is Thomas Jefferson. You make this feel very special to be that. But what I want you all young people to say, uh, understand, is that we don't know who Jesus was. All we know, he was the righteous one, okay? We don't know the name. There wasn't nobody there. And matter of fact, if somebody was there, they're not alive right now, okay? So we have to get the book, because the book is just the basic of what we need to understand. That's what y'all young people need to know. It's just the basic. If you ever read that book for yourself, then you will come on, that light will come on for you. You know what I'm saying? You can't go on what somebody else say in that book. You got to read that book for yourself. I was raised up in the church. I've been in the church ever since I made about six weeks old. So I know. I had to learn to read that book for myself. I heard preachers preach, 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 preach. But when I start reading that book for myself, and I mean read the whole book, don't just read some of it, read the whole book, then you will come to understanding that names, what color, doesn't matter. As long as you know that you got a savior when you leave this planet. We just visiting here. And it doesn't matter what color you is, where you came from. Because when that sun come up, it shines on everybody and everything. And if he, if I call him God, if God don't stop somebody from doing something, who are we to say what they should or should not do? And you? Uh. And Session for the Truth found out that, uh, speaking of Jefferson County, I always wonder where, we, where my parents get their name from, Jefferson. In these last days, I'm beginning to find out that we're doing the research on it. And Thomas Jefferson could be my great, my sixth great grandfather. And we're doing the research on it. I'm not going to tell you all of what, how, how, how we came to that conclusion, but that's, that's what it is. And you all are probably going to find that out in a few days before the year. That Jefferson came from Thomas Jefferson because of yeah. his sons was in Virginia, and they came down here to Jefferson County and Leon. Alright, so I'm told we have a tour to go on to uh, in a few minutes, so I guess I was just looking at my clock, um, and so, but it's all good, we got time, that's what watches are for, and so, uh, you know, we've spoken so much, um, and uh, usually we like to give time towards the end of the interview to let y'all talk about uh, something in specific, uh, you know, right or right point you already made, like whatever you like to say, uh, that we haven't asked. Thank you. You know, I was born and raised here in Jefferson County. And I went to school here. And 
Uh, when I finished high school, I went to the Army. And when I got into the Army, I went to Germany and all over. And I spent some time even at the uh, uh, Ramstein. And I went to NATO headquarters over there, also in Brussels, Belgium. And when I came back home, I lived here in Jefferson County, and I got married, and I got started my work at the Sheriff's Department. Also in Jefferson County, I was the first black to work in Jefferson County at the Sheriff's Department, able to lock up in jail a white person. I was called all kind of names when they came in jail, into the jail to be locked up. They would say, Dad, do you see he not locked me up? What you say? That's what they wanted to know. And first, the sheriffs are standing up in there. And one of the deputies, is he going to lock this person up? The sheriff said, yeah, what I think I hired him for. That's his job. And I done my job. I told him not to worry about me uh -huh. because I'm gonna do my job. Regardless of what they say about me or how they handle me, uh -huh. hey, I done my job. Uh -huh. I locked them up. I had some rough times going through stuff here in this county, but I still wouldn't leave uh -huh. to go any place else to live. Because my grandparents work hard right. for that property and stuff that they got. I hear about two miles away. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I'll tell you something about my grandparents. My grandparents, my granddaddy, his daddy mm -hmm. was a slave owner mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Monticello. He was white. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, my great grandmama. Mm -hmm. She used to cook for him. Mm -hmm. He had 10 children by this black woman. And we, they grew up here and they worked here for a while because of the plantation. They never did have to do a whole lot, and he gave them property, but they moved down south and lived down south. But that's the way it was here. I still don't know a whole lot about my great-granddaddy because he's buried only a couple of miles down the road. You know, they didn't put no nothing on the grave or nothing, but so we went back there and put some bricks on it to identify where it was. But that's the way it was back there. And they didn't talk much about it at all. I found out that when I was about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. One of my uncles came up and he wanted to talk to me about the history of the family. So it was the white guy that lived next door to us about what, what was going on back then. He began to tell him, said, my daddy and your daddy was brothers. And that's how we got to be related because, you know, the color of the skin and the hair uh -huh. and everything you could see from my uncle's now, all you could tell that they were mixed. Uh -huh. And it was something else, a lot of things that they didn't talk about. But as long as I was wondering about why, everybody from South Florida, when they called us, they would call us white man, they had come give us the message that they call about and come to find out that was my granddaddy's nephew. We had a similar, we, we have this, had a similar thing that happened to my family too. It could have been the same brothers or the same dad. <laughs> because we had white in our family. You can see it in our aunts. And matter of fact, my grandmother told me it was an Indian and a white man, so.
you can tell the Indian in her and all of my other aunties, you could tell the white was in them. So I was brought up not to be prejudiced by anybody. I was brought up that we were like a rose bush with different color flowers, you know, or uh, either garden with different color flowers. That's how come I never could be say, you this and I'm that. that I never could do that because that's the way our parents brought us up, just like his parents. And also, the brother, no, the son of the, the man, which was my, maybe my great great grandparent, uh, dad gave us our property. Gave it to her. the brother, I mean, the son came back and gave it to his sister, his black sister. So that's how we ended up with our property. And what about you, sir? I'm sure closes off. What was that again? What is, uh, so anything that we've not covered, anything you would like to speak on, uh, you would like people to know, you know, especially if we haven't touched on it? No, there's nothing, I, except I just want our people to know the truth. Yes. If they really want to be free. That's the only way we can be free is by knowing the truth. If we know truth, truth then we can be free. Right. Until then, we're going to stay in bondage. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for All taking right, the time to speak with us. All right.